So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the transfer function of a voltage controlled oscillator. And so when we talk about transfer functions, we're talking about linear systems uh, because transfer functions are only strictly speaking defined for linear systems. So we know if this is a linear system and it's got some transfer function h of s, that if we throw in a sinusoid, so let's say we throw in a sinusoid of amplitude a and uh, frequency omega naught, we know that if this is a linear system, we have to get out uh, the, a sinusoid of perhaps a different amplitude, so b, um, times a sinusoid of the same frequency, potentially with a phase shift. And we can also represent this with complex numbers using the transfer function. But if we've got an oscillator, so say this is our voltage controlled oscillator block, uh, we know that if we apply some DC input voltage, V control, so this is not a sinusoid at the input, uh, we, we know that we will get a sinusoid of some amplitude, let's just say B again, just to keep things similar, um, of some frequency, sine of omega naught T. And omega naught is uh, a function of the control voltage. Uh, for now, we're just going to assume that it's a linear function. So let's say that omega naught is just some constant k uh, times v control, so times the control voltage. Uh, this is the same thing as saying that if we were to plot our uh, frequency of our voltage controlled oscillator as a function of the control voltage, that the control vol that the frequency would look like this. It would just look like a straight line. Now this obviously isn't realistic, but that's okay because we can linearize this system about a, a point. So even if this is a, a nonlinear, highly nonlinear um, trans uh, highly nonlinear function, uh, then we can just find the slope at a point. And so long as we don't deviate much from that then we're okay. We can still pretend that this is a linear function. So this is going to be a, a, a valid uh, a valid assumption for, for the time being. Um, but but where does that leave us? So if, if we rewrite this uh, entirely, let's just redraw this redraw this block right here. Um, we know if we apply some DC control voltage, V control, uh, we'll get some output uh, B times sine of some constant K uh, times V control times T. Uh, but this is, and this is our voltage controlled oscillator, but this is clearly not a linear system because we're applying a DC input voltage or a sinusoid of frequency zero, and we're getting a sinusoid of a completely different frequency. So uh, this completely breaks our definition for linear system. So how do we get over this? How do we, how do we fix this? Um, well, up to this point, we've been assuming that we need to relate the input voltage to the output voltage. Uh, but this isn't in fact the case. We're, uh, we're mathematicians. Uh, well, we're engineers, but some of us are mathematicians. Um, we don't need to constrain ourselves to physical variables. Uh, so we can, instead of worrying about the output voltage, which uh, is hopeless at this point because that would be a nonlinear system, uh, we can instead worry only about this term inside the sinusoid, uh, the, the uh, sinusoid argument, uh, the phase. So this whole argument, this k times v control times t, this is referred to as the phase, which in general is a function of time. And so how does this help us? Well, well, first of all, this V control, this doesn't need to be a DC voltage anymore. This can be a, a time varying voltage. Let's just call it X of T. Uh, and so let's rewrite V control over here as well um, as just X of T instead. Uh, but if we do that, um, you, you might you might think that this is how we rewrite it, but this is actually incorrect. Uh, this is this is wrong, and that's because our phase um, it increments slowly. So if we've got uh, what I mean by that is if we've got a sinusoid, uh, 
and it's at a specific frequency, say it's initially at some frequency omega 1, um, then its phase is given by just, uh, in this case, omega 1 times t. That's how much phase it's accumulating. So if it starts at 0, uh, and then eventually it goes to its period t0, uh, since omega, or t1, I guess in this case, uh, since uh, t1 is just 2 pi over the angular frequency omega 1, then the phase, by the time we reach t1, the phase will be 2 pi. And this is, uh, this is a general definition of phase. Phase increments by 2 pi for each completed period. But if instead our sinusoid changes and all of a sudden it starts moving very quickly, um, we can't just multiply the whole function by the new frequency omega 2. So we can't just say that the total phase uh, is just omega 2 times t, because we had this whole time period before where the frequency was much slower. So we can't just multiply by t, we actually have to integrate. So the total phase is in general the integral of the frequency as a function of time. It's not just multiplied by t. So if we plug in our function for frequency, I uh, remember we said that frequency of a voltage controlled oscillator was just some constant k uh, times the control voltage v control. Or if we want omega to be a function of t, we can just say that it's k times some x of t. So then our phase is just the integral. And if we want to be precise, let's just say this is from zero to some time t so that we can reproduce our initial, our initial expression, just omega times t. Uh, so zero times t times omega as a function of t, which is k times x of t dt. And so this is what we want. Uh, this is a relationship, a linear relationship between the phase and the input voltage. So our voltage controlled oscillator, if we don't care about the output voltage, but we instead care about the output phase and the input voltage, so we're sending in a voltage and we're getting out a phase, then we can calculate the transfer function just by taking the Laplace transform of this whole expression. So 5s, if we just take the Laplace transform of this, uh, 5s is just equal to 1 over s times k x of s, or dividing both sides by x of s to get the transfer function h of s, uh, we get that this is just equal to k over s. And so this is the transfer function of our voltage controlled oscillator. It's just k over s. And it might seem really simple, but it's actually uh, quite an intellectual leap, uh, in my opinion. I struggled with this for days. Um, we're no longer using voltage. We're using some non-physical quantity, some potentially unmeasurable quantity um, in order to turn this nonlinear system, uh, because it was originally a sign of x of t, which is clearly nonlinear non and absolutely disgusting. Instead of worrying about the voltage, we're worrying about the phase, which allows us to turn this into a linear system. And you might object, you might say, well, uh, how are we gonna measure this phase? Because voltage was nice and current was nice because we could measure those things. Well, there are actually devices uh, or circuits called phase detectors. And I'm going to be going over these in future videos, uh, but essentially they allow us to measure this quantity of phase and output some voltage. Uh, so in general, that voltage is gonna be a function of time. And this might not be a linear system, this phase detector, but we can either linearize it or we can design it so that it is linear, so that we can analyze it using linear systems theory. And so just in conclusion, uh, this is describing the transfer function of a voltage controlled oscillator which we saw to be k over s, where k is the slope uh, of the frequency as a function of input voltage, uh, DC input voltage, V control.
And we also said that even if our function is not a linear function of V control, which in general it's not going to be, uh, if we're interested in a certain point, so a certain DC value uh, for V control, then we can linearize this system about that point. And in the context of PLLs or phase locked loops, uh, this is a very valid assumption because phase locked loops operate about some frequency very tightly, uh, some frequency omega naught or some frequency F naught, and their deviations from that are very small. So this is actually uh, a very valid um, approximation for in the context of phase locked loops. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down below and I'll see you next time.